Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi and it's the 22nd of January and welcome to This Day in Scottish History. I'm in the Salutation Hotel in Perth and you know I always like to give you a wee question. So once you've watched this episode, at the end, ask, you, ask the question, why is it appropriate that I'm in the Salutation Hotel in Perth? And you can put your comments down at the bottom uh, the wee thing there. Today, I want to talk to you about the Glorious Revolution. What's the Glorious Revolution, I hear you ask? Imagine, it's the end of the 17th century. Just less than 40 years before, it was the end of the English Civil War, where English parliamentarians chopped the head off of Charles I, King of Scotland, England and Ireland. And he was also the most intransigent of the Stuart kings. Having said that, after 10 years of Cromwell, when Cromwell died, the English parliamentarians realised that the grass wasn't greener on the other side. And so they asked Charles's son, also called Charles, to come back out of exile and be King Charles II. Now, I know very little about King Charles II, apart from the fact that he gave his name to a very popular pet dog. Very few people realise his middle name was Chihuahua. Anyway, uh, there was, it was reasonably stable uh, with a more conciliatory Charles II, but he died suddenly of an apoplectic fit. I'm not a medical person, I assume it was something to do with Brexit. The point is, that he had no surviving heirs. And so his brother, James, became James VII of Scotland and the second of England. There was just one problem with James. He was a wee bit catholic -y. You know what I'm talking about. Worshipping idols, celebrating Christmas, presiding over despotic European monarchies. These Catholics are always up to their tricks, weren't they? So the English parliamentarians wanted to get rid of James the seventh for us, the second for them. The problem was they wanted to make sure that the grass was greener on the other side. And everybody knows if you want good grass, you go to Amsterdam. And so seven English parliamentarians wrote a letter to this Dutch guy called William of Orange. And they said, if you come over here, you can be king and you can play up front for Rangers. And the thing, the good thing was, you see, he was a Protestant and he was married to James's daughter. So they said to him, you come over and invade with an army, we'll support you. Oh, and by the way, don't forget the ganja. So William of Orange landed in Devon in November 1688 and he started to head towards London. Now James headed out with his own army. James actually had a bigger army than uh, William of Orange did, but at the last minute he caked his pants and fled over the water to France. Now I know that might make him seem like he was a bit of a coward, but think about this. His great-grandmother, Mary Queen of Scots, had had her head chopped off. His dad, Charles I, had had his head chopped off. His own privy council had rejected his shampoo budget on the grounds it was unnecessary. This was a guy under some pressure. And so he left his army, he headed to London, he took the Great Seal of England, threw it into the River Thames, and then he fled over the water to France. William of Orange marched towards London and on this day, the 22nd of January 1689, the English Parliament decided that James, because of his actions, had abdicated and they made William of Orange King William III. And it's called the Glorious Revolution because it was a bloodless coup and nobody got hurt. Now, if you're thinking, hold on, this is all about the English, and I'm thinking, you're right. See, I've got nothing against the English. It's just that there are millions of them coming up here, taking our jobs, getting the benefits. You can what they're like. 
And the, the thing is that in this island story, it's always told from the position of how it affected England. In Scotland and in Ireland, this revolution was neither bloodless nor glorious. In fact, in the north of Ireland, there's blood being spilled right to this day. And in Scotland, on this day, on the 22nd of January 1689, effectively, the Stuart dynasty, the longest reigning dynasty in Scotland, came to an end. And there might be people, there's at least two reasons I can see people might debate me on that. If you want to do that, put it in the comments in an update underneath. The point I'm making is that effectively, on this day in history, the Stuart dynasty came to an end. Which for us meant that it started the Jacobite Wars. Either directly or indirectly, the Glorious Revolution led to the Massacre of Glencoe, to union with the English, to Culloden and its aftermath and the decimation of the Highlands and ultimately to the uh, fake news bias reporting of the BBC. Obviously you know you're only ever going to get honest reporting from me. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like it, share it, like the page, share the page with other people. In the meantime, let's have a toast to the king over the water. <laughs>